Hello, hello, everybody. Sorry, I'm a couple minutes late. I told you I'd be here at one o'clock. <laughs> I am live on both Facebook and Instagram at the same time, and I always get a little discombobulated when I'm setting those up. So, oh, I'm so glad that so many of you are here to join me. That's fantastic. Okay. So whether you are watching on Facebook or Instagram or you're watching this as a replay, welcome. We're going to talk today about the most effective alternative to reading curriculum. Uh, I'm Sarah McKenzie, and as the host of the Read Aloud Revival podcast, I get asked all the time, you know, which reading curriculum should I use with my kids? And while I do use a curriculum to teach my kids how to read, what I think people want to know most often is once they know how to read, then uh, what do you use after that for comprehension, for literature, for uh, analysis and all that stuff? So I hope what we talk about today surprises you a little bit and delights you because I'm hoping it will it'll be a lot simpler than you think it is. Um, if I look like I'm not looking right at you, I'm sorry. It's because I have Facebook on one camera and Instagram on another because I wanted to say hi to as many of you as possible. Um, so <laughs> I'll try not to be too schizophrenic with my cameras. I'm so glad so many of you are here. Yes. Oh, thank you so much, Carolyn, for sharing that. Yeah, share this with your friends. Let them know it's on so that they can come join us. So I have six kids from my oldest is 16. She's a 10th grader and my youngest are four and a half year old twins. And we don't use any reading curriculum or any literature analysis or any reading comprehension workbooks cue the hallelujah course and I'm going to tell you about that today and what we do instead that I think is simpler <clears throat> and that I think also preserves that love of, of reading in our kids. Um, here's something you should know and this is something that Jim Turley said in the Read Aloud Handbook which I meant to have out but I don't it's way over there and I don't want to go get it for myself. Um, basically he says we have 100% enthusiasm and desire from kids when they start school for reading. And we all know that, right? I mean, you have a five-year-old, and if you start reading aloud, they'll cl come climb onto your lap, right? They want to be, they want to be right there. They want to hear the story, and you, most of them are pretty excited about reading before they actually start the slog of, of decoding. <laughs> but then what happens is that number steadily declines year after year after year, until a typical high school student, get this, reads an average of six minutes a day for pleasure. Now, one thing we know about that six minutes a day is it's an average, so that means that actually most high schoolers don't read anything for pleasure, and a very few read a whole lot for pleasure, because usually people who read for pleasure read a lot, right? And so what's the disconnect here? And Jim Trillis really pushed in the Read Aloud Handbook that he thought reading aloud could be a bridge. We're going to take that one step further today. Um, because I think, so think back to your own school, your own schooling days. Do you think about like a book you had to write a report or an essay um, or make like a diorama or something? Think about one of those books. Is that any of your childhood favorites? Or did you, you know, you do finish writing the book report and you couldn't wait to like go home and like start reading it again? <laughs> right? I remember all the books that I was assigned reading. In fact, somebody recently asked me, hey, have you read Maniac McGee? And I went, ah, no, yes, I read it in fifth grade and I had to make a journal entry <laughs> from one of the characters' perspectives and write a book report on it. And I don't want to read that book ever again. <laughs> she said, it's such a good book. But the funny thing is, is I don't remember it in that fond kind of way because I was assigned it and then I, I was given this reading comprehension type assignment, right? What happens is we school the love of reading out of our kids. So they are little and they think reading is this joyful time of warm memories sitting on mom's lap. And then they get to, by the time, usually they get to third or fourth grade, they're given you know enough reading comprehension worksheets, enough book report assignments, that they aren't loving. And so they start to think that school is, I'm sorry, reading is for school. Reading is something you do to either get a grade or to learn information, but it's not something you do for delight. So we gotta fix that. Because here's the thing, it's very, very important that we preserve our children's delight in reading. That doesn't mean they're gonna love every book you give them, and it doesn't mean they don't have to ever read something they don't want to. My 10th grader just this morning finished <laughs> Willa Cather's Death Comes from the Arch Archbishop, and I can guarantee you she's not going to read that one again on her own, but I can also tell you that she that her love of reading has been preserved because of the way we're handling it, so we're going to get into that. Um, 
We at the Reload Revival, we talk about three steps to engaging your kids with books that don't include any book reports or write, written assignments or anything, okay? So if you want to have really good, meaningful conversations with your kids about books, that's gonna be a really, really good way in to, have, to making sure that your kids understand what they're reading and to deepening their understanding. We get there slowly. So the three steps I'm gonna go over really quick and then I'm gonna show you something that I'll, I'll call and flesh it out, give you an example, okay? The first step is just to read it aloud. And you, can, you don't want to do this with every book that you read, obviously, because we would never read nearly enough, right? But if I would say, you know, well, we'll, we'll get into that in a minute too, but like maybe once a month or so you want to, um, instead of doing a reading comprehension workbook, instead of reading, um, let's say, Little House on the Prairie and having your kids do assignments that are asking about what happened in the story that they have to write out or do a book report on or something, you basically read the book aloud. That's the first thing. The second thing is you share an experience with them. We'll talk about that in a second. And the third is that you talk about it. That's it. Three steps. And I am completely convinced that if you do these three steps about once a month with your kids of any age, they don't need reading comprehension worksheets. They don't need to write book reports. They will be able to think more deeply about all the books they read on their own because they're developing some really important habits. And we're going to talk about that. So let me show you how we do this. Let me just give you a really uh, flushed out example. Um, in Read Aloud Revival Premium Membership, we do a monthly book club, and we do these three steps. The whole book club is based on these three steps. Read a book aloud, share an experience, and talk about it. So I'm going to show you what we're doing this month. We have, you, do you all know who Mary Pope Osborne is? I'm seeing you all give me Willa Cather examples in the comments. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, so Mary Pope Osborne wrote the Magic Treehouse books, and um, we're actually going to read one of her American Tall Tales. She has this fab fabulous retelling. Oops, sorry, I did that for Facebook. I can see on Facebook, you can all see it on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're going to be reading American Tall Tales. We're actually going to be reading the last one um, on Paul Bunyan. There are some really awesome woodcut illustrations in this book. Hold it so everybody can see. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to read this aloud. And we're doing this book club with all of our kids, no matter their ages. So in my house, I have from four to 16, and they're all gonna participate. So we're gonna read aloud Paul Bunyan. Then we're gonna share an experience. And the experience we're gonna share in our book club is flapjacks, because you know Paul Bunyan loves his flapjacks, and I can pretty much guarantee you that zero of your children <laughs> We'll put up a fight about read aloud time if you put a big old stack of flapjacks on the table. So uh, flapjacks in America are just pancakes. So what we're going for when we share an experience with our kids is a warm, memorable experience, something that associates delight and warm memories with the book. So it doesn't need to be a complicated craft or like a themed dinner or anything complicated like that. If that is your thing, you love putting together those kinds of things, go for it. It's just totally not my thing. So I go really simple, especially if I can replace a meal so I can like cut down on my workload. Great, we'll have pancakes for dinner and I'll read to you from Paul Bunyan. And um, especially when you pair really good, delicious food <laughs> with a story, it just makes for a warm, happy memory. So think about your own book clubs as grownups, right? When we go to book club, we usually eat food, right? We There's usually some snacks. Um, it's just sort of that casual warm environment and that's what we want to go for with our kids as well so we read aloud the book and we're going to have a flapjack have flapjack jacks while we read it then we're going to talk about it now before i go any further what we do in read aloud revival premium is we actually give them a book club guide and so the book club guide breaks down and i'm see if i can hold this up so you both can see the three steps reading the book aloud sharing the experience and this is where it says to do the flapjack uh, dinner. Oh, there's also, I almost forgot, there's also, um, there are some really cool Paul Bunyan statues all over the United States. A lot of them are in Minnesota. And so if you live close to the, we have a link in here of where you can find uh, Paul Bunyan um, statues. But I don't live anywhere near Paul Bunyan statues, so we're just doing flapjacks. And then talk about it. And there's some suggested questions, which I will talk about with you in a second, because there's a key, there's an important difference between good questions and not so good questions. If you want to get this book club guide, usually these are just for members. We put them out every month when we do our new book club, um, but you can get it today for free. So I wanted you guys to have this one. If you text RAR to the number 345-345, I'll send it to you. So just text 
R A R, like read aloud revival, R A R to the number three, four, five, three, four, five. And then you'll get this. And so the first page is that three steps, one, two, three. And I promise we'll talk about the questions in a second. And then the second is kind of what we do extra special and premium. And we'll talk about that too, because we're all about warm, happy memories. And we kind of make those big here. So reading aloud the story and then sharing an experience. Now that experience could be very simple. Um, Jane Yolen came to Read Aloud Revival in December. We read Owl Moon for our book club. And I'll, t I'll show you how you can do this with a 16-year-old. And it's really awesome, just like you can do it with your 5-year-old. Um, but what happened is our shared experience was that we went on a, on a on the full moon in December. We went on moonwalks. So, you know, no matter where you live, everybody in Read Aloud Revival Premium, it was at their homes. We were going on this moon desk, this moonlit walk at dusk. Um, on the same night and taking pictures and sharing them with each other. And we made this really beautiful memory with our kids who thought it was so cool. They got to go out on a moonlit walk, come home and read Owl Moon with hot cocoa. That's a memorable experience, right? That's something your kids are going to associate with the light and they'll remember. Um, okay. So though that's read aloud and share an experience. And then the third part is where the magic happens. So the third part is to talk about it. So here's the thing. If you create in your home a habit of helping your kids learn to ask questions about what they're reading, open-ended questions about what they're reading, you don't need to worry about reading comprehension. And you don't need to worry about having your kids write book reports or doing a reading curriculum. The reason why is because an open-ended question helps your child think more deeply about the books they're reading better than any question you can ask them on a reading comprehension sheet, like in what year did this book take place? Or what city did they move to after they lived in this city? Or what happened after this happened in the story? That's just recall. You know, a child can read a book. I, I got a great grades in school doing that, right? But I didn't necessarily really understand or form a relationship with the books I was reading. So if our, if our hope for our kids is that they form an ability to think really deeply about the books they read and then still to love reading, then we can do that through these open-ended uh, questions. So in, um, in my new book, The Read Aloud Family, which is behind me, I don't know where if you can see it, right there, there we go. There's a whole chapter that has 10 open-ended questions you can ask your kids about any book. And um, what I love about these questions is that you can ask them about the same story to a different child. So in the case of this month's book club, we'll read Paul Bunyan, and then I can ask my four-year-old a question, an open-ended question about it, and um, I can ask my 16-year-old about the que that same question. They're gonna give me different answers based on what they're ready for. So um, it's like spreading a feast. Charlotte Mason, um, Education talks about spreading this feast and everybody takes what they're fit for. That's what we're doing here. We spread this feast. We tell them a really good story, a very well-told story. And then everybody takes what they're fit for and you ask an open-ended question. And depending on where your child is in their understanding, in their maturity, in their development, you'll have this conversation that varies depending on where they're at. And they'll, everybody will get what they're fit for. So in the guide, I actually use those 10 questions and I we pull out a handful and and um, ask specific questions about Paul Bunyan. So I'll give you an example. One is, um, who is the kindest character in this story? And so then your four-year-old or your 18-year-old or anywhere in between, they can answer who they think the kindest character in the story is. And you can ask them then, well, what did they do that was so kind? Do you see how this would be easier to, or I'm sorry, this would be more meaningful to ask than just asking what happened? Because if you're asking what happened, all I need is recall. But if you're asking who's the most kind and what did they do that was most kind, you're doing two things. You're asking them to think and make connections and make decisions about what they've read. But you're also asking them to go back to the text. Because you're saying, well, what did they do that made them so kind? They have to think back through the story and think, well, what did they do? Another one we have in here is, um, what surprised you the most about this story of Paul Bunyan. And that can be really fun, really fun question to ask. You can ask that about any story, right? What surprised you most about Goodnight Moon? What surprised you the most about Anna Karenina? What surprised you the most about A Tale of Two Cities or The Chronicle, or, you know, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe or Red Wall or any picture book that you read this morning? What surprised you the most about this story? And they have to think through and make some connections and answer it. They have to have paid attention. So, so many reading curricula that are based on answering recall questions about what happened in the story, 
the questions have one single goal, and that goal is to find out if your kid read it <laughs> or were listening, right? We don't just want to stop there. If your child can answer the question, who was the kindest in this story, and when were, when were they kind, or who was the most courageous in this story, or who was the most wicked, or who was the most cowardly, and they can answer that, they listen to the story. So you, you, yes, you find out if your child was listening and paying attention and understanding, but you also get that extra um, ability to have a good conversation with them about it. You, you spread this feast and everyone takes what they're fit for because your four-year-old's gonna give a simpler answer, very likely, than your 16-year-old, and the way that conversation goes from there is also gonna be simpler. A really good way to see how that could work is if you were to ask, um, one of the other questions, it's probably on here because I like to ask it. Um, yeah, what other story does Paul Bunyan remind you of? And you could ask this about any book, right? Or any story, any fairy tale, <laughs> any picture book. What other story does this remind you of? And your small child might say the picture book you read them yesterday and then have to start thinking about how they're the same and different because all stories are the same in some ways and different in some ways. So you can ask that about anything. But your high schooler might actually make some more complex and advanced connections between stories. So do you see what that, how that goes? Basically, an open-ended question is any question you don't know the answer to before you ask it. And that's a really important distinction. Because if you know the answer before you ask it, you're not opening up a good conversation you're not quizzing your child, and they are not fooled by it. <laughs> they know that, right? So they're thinking, what does mom want me to say? But if you're asking an open-ended question that doesn't have one right or wrong answer, now it's an invitation to dialogue and to think with our kids. Okay, hopefully my phone doesn't die. I just got a low battery, notice. All right, so in the book club guide, we help you by get, assigning a few really helpful of those open-ended questions to the book that we're reading. So again, if you missed it, you can text the word, or text R-A-R, -R, the letters R-A-R, -R, to the number 345345, and that will give you this book club guide for free. And you can just go to the library and get yourself Mary Pope Osborne's American Tall Tales and do the book club guide. Now, here's the deal. At Read Aloud Revival Premium, we take this a step further because we are really big on delight. We really want our kids to leave our homes and be in high school and be beyond high school and love reading as much as they did when they were six or eight or 10 or 12. So we're really big on cultivating that delightful experience. So what we do is we do the read aloud and we share an experience and we talk about it and then we take it a step further because we invite the author to Read Aloud Revival Premium to meet our kids and our kids get to ask their questions. Sometimes it's the author, sometimes it's the illustrator, sometimes it's both. So on February 21st, uh, Read Aloud Revival Premium members will get to meet Mary Pope Osborne. She's coming just for us, and we'll get to submit our questions, and she's going to answer them. I love that because, you know, it's it's so cool when kids submit their questions, and so I'll ask, okay, so Hannah wants to know, Hannah's seven, and she wants to know where you first got the idea for the Magic Treehouse series, and Mary Pope Osborne will say, Hannah, that's a great question. And, I mean, the parents tell us that these kids just light up when they hear this author talk to them and answer their questions. But also for so many of us growing up, did you realize like that the authors of your books you loved were like real people? <laughs> like went to the grocery store and, and like just lived normal lives? I think it's so inspiring for our kids to realize that their favorite authors and illustrators, that's something that they could do, that they could make for the world and make something beautiful. It's so inspiring. And it also gives us this different connection point. And it extends those open-ended conversations, those open-ended questions and those good conversations we're having to include the author or illustrator into that conversation. It's really unique. So we'll have our flapjack read loud and then, you know, talk about the book and then meet the author. And I can pretty much guarantee your kids won't forget that, right? So if we're going for warm memories about, I just love that. I can't wait for like, for like a decade from now. I want, I'm, I hope my kids say, you know, oh my gosh, I remember that book because we like, I think we ate pancakes or something. And then we got to meet her and she answered one of my questions. And there's just a deeper thing happening there than could ever happen by me saying, hey, read this book and then write a book report or fill out this reading comprehension worksheet so I know that you read it. There's like a deeper appreciation for two things, for the book, for the actual work, and also for your child's ability to think and connect with the book itself. So much more respect for our children. Um, 
I don't know about you, but if I went to a book club meeting with some girlfriends and the first thing they did when I walked in is handed me a quiz and said, we just want to make sure that you read this book before we get started, <laughs> I don't think I'd go back. I wouldn't feel like that was something that I wanted to do. We respect our children so much when we invite them into a conversation about the books that we that we read. So we're gonna we do this every month in Read Aloud Revival Premium. And if you want to join us for Mary Pope Osborne's, first you can grab this for free by texting R A R and uh, to the number three four five three four five. And then if you want to join us on February twenty first, you want to join Read Aloud Revival Premium membership by Thursday. We're open right now, so you can register. We close on Thursday at 9 p.m. Pacific, um, and you can do that at rarmembership.com. So every single month we do this, we have a new book club guide for our members, and we uh, basically replace your reading curriculum or your reading comprehension worksheets or that need to do book reports with these delightful experiences by giving you a book club guide and an experience they'll remember. So um, did I grab the wrong one? Oh, I didn't. I wanted to show you who else is coming up. So. February is Mary Pope Osborne, and March we're having Brian Floca, which this is not the cover. I The dust jacket is not on here because my, my little kids are kind of hard on dust jackets. I don't know if yours are too. Um, but this is the book Locomotive by Brian Floca. It won a Caldecott a few years back. I'm going to show you a few pictures in here. They're gorgeous. Okay. I want to show you a good one. This is a... Uh, I can't, I can't hold it. This is a great picture book to read with kids of all ages because there's a lot of actual, um, oh, there's a lot of details your older kids can learn about the history of locomotion, basically, um, and steam engines and how they work. And there's a lot of like detailed pictures and words, but my little boys will sit and stare at these books forever. So anyway, Brian Floca is coming. Um, in March. So we're going to do the same thing. We'll have the book club guide. So we'll read the book aloud. We'll share an experience, but I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. Um, and we will talk about it with some of those open-ended questions and then meet Brian Floca. And I love it when illustrators come because they show us a lot of times their in-process illustrations right there on screen. And um, sometimes they'll sketch things on demand for kids who say, hey, can you draw a whatever? <laughs> um, and they show us a lot of how illustrations are made. And that's fascinating. Okay, that's March. April is my favorite, and I'm sure you all know that my favorite in the world is Tommy DePaola, right? So Tommy DePaola is coming again in April, so our book club is going to include both Stregonona and also 26 Fairmont Avenue. So there is, look at all the hearts I just saw pop up on the screen. Everybody loves Tommy, I know. So Stregonona is a fantastic picture book series that you can read with your younger kids. My older kids, though usually kind of wander in when I'm reading it because they're so wonderful. Um, but then your older kids, this is a really short um, biographical tale of Tommy's, but older kids will love listening to this too. And it's a fast. I'm really big on fast read alouds. Nobody wants to read like War and Peace out loud, right? You just want something fast that you all enjoy and are delighted in. This is perfect. So we'll have the same thing. We'll read aloud. We'll have an experience for you, a simple experience to share with your kids, some qu open-ended questions you can ask your kids about them, and then you'll get to meet Tommy DePaola April 18th in Read Aloud Revival Premium. And then in May, uh, N.D. Wilson, who's the author of lots of books, um, the Hunter Cupboard series. He's also written Outlaws of Time, um, Boys of Blur, Ashton Town Burials. He wrote a couple board books that are hysterical. Hello Ninja and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, the one we're doing for book club is 100 Cupboards. Um, and he was on Read Aloud Revival. I don't know which episode. Maybe 41. I feel like maybe Courtney could put that in the, in the comments on Facebook. Um, I think it was episode 41. And he talked about the role of magic and fear uh, in books for kids. And it was fantastic. Anyway, he's going to come and talk to us about this one. So we'll do the same thing. We'll read it aloud, or you can do an audiobook if you want for this one. Um, we'll give you an experience to share with your kids about it, and also open-ended questions. And another thing you can think about, too, um, when you're doing these book clubs with your kids is it doesn't have to be a read aloud. So sometimes I will read the book on my own, and especially with my older kids, something like this, I might say, you all read it, and we're going to get together on three weeks from now and we're going to go out to a coffee shop or maybe we'll just wait till all the littles are in bed and we'll have hot chocolate and we'll talk about it. That's another way you can do it. So the read aloud part doesn't necessarily need to be you reading the book aloud. It can be an audiobook, 
and it can also just be a shared reading experience. And then you come together and talk about it. So that's where the magic happens is in that conversation and in meeting the author because <laughs> there, because there's so much that happens that's so enlightening in those conversations. So, okay. I think I've gone on too long. How long has this even been? I don't know how to tell. Um, oh, you guys are also fantastic. Let me see if there's any questions that I should answer before. Yeah, that's good. Oh, perfect. 44. Okay, thank you, Courtney. So if you want to hear the podcast episode with Andy Wilson, it's episode 44 of the Read Aloud Revival. So you go to readaloudrevival.com and look for episode 44. I am going to um, actually pop off here so that I can answer questions better in the comments. Um, thank you so much for joining me. This has been fantastic. And if you want that book club guide, which I don't know where I put over oh, right here. I'm such a mess. If you want the book club guide, remember that you can get this for free for the American Tall Tales by texting RAR to the number 345345. And then if you want to join us for one of these every single month and get to meet the authors live and illustrators live, then you want to join membership. We close this Thursday and um, we close Thursday at 9 p.m. Pacific. And so that's February 1st. You want to join before then. And you do that at rarmembership.com. Okay, I will be on Facebook in the comments. I know I can't really answer the comments uh, by texting them on Instagram, but if you head over to Facebook, the Facebook page, Read a Lot of Revival, and um, ask questions there, I can answer them there. So thank you so much for coming. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.